We continue now at the top of Daf Samen Chayim and Beis and Maseches Nedarim. This is Nedarim Daf 65b. And the previous summit, the Mishnah had said, let's say have a situation, a person, for example, makes a neder not to go into a house because there's a bad dog in the house, and then the dog dies. So even though it seems like that neder, that Pesach, is something that is nolot, something that happened after the neder was made, Rabbi Meir says it's not considered nolot, and the person can use that as a Pesach. The person can say, had I known that the dog would die, so then I would never have made the neder, and one can undo the neder in that fashion. And there was a machlokas amoroim, exactly what Rabbi Meir meant. According to Rav Huna, what Rabbi Meir meant to say was, this was really a conditional neder. The neder was made on condition that there's a bad dog in the house. If the dog dies, there is no bad dog in the house. The condition is not fulfilled, and therefore it is not a neder. Rabbi Yochanan disagreed. Rabbi Yochanan said the real pshat in the Mishnah was that the dog had already died. It turned out that the dog was dead at the time of the neder. It was a mistaken neder, and that's why Rabbi Meir says that the neder can be undone in that case. And the Gemara now says, Mesiv Rabbi Abba. Rabbi Abba asks from a later Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Konim she'eni nose leplonis ka'ura. Let's say a person makes a neder. I'm not going to marry so and so because she's ugly. Vaharehi no. It turns out that she's beautiful. Shechora vahari levano. Or he says that she's black. It turns out she's white. Kitsara vaharehi arucha. He says she's short. It turns out she's tall. So mutter ba. So the Mishnah says it's mutter for him to to marry her. Lo mipnei she'ka'ura venasis no. It's not because we say she was ugly and now later it's like no that she became beautiful. Or shechora venasis levaner because she was black and she became white. White, or Kitsara Venasis Arucha, she was short and she became tall. That's not what's happening over here. Ella Shah Nedr Tos. Rather, the mission explains this is a case of a Nedr Batos. The person made the Nedr by mistake. He thought that she was ugly. He thought she was black. He thought that she was short. It turned out these things were not true at the time of the Nedr, and that's why the Nedr is not in effect. And the Gemara now says, Bishalom al Ravuna. I understand how we can explain this mission according to Ravuna. To Amar Nasa Katola Nidro Bidavar, because he says this Mishnah, our mission is talking about it as if it's a condition. When he says there's a bad dog in the house, that's considered a condition. So it's two separate Mishnayis. Tana Tola Nidro Bidavar. Vatana Nadar Tos. The Mishnah teaches us one case of a case which we consider to be conditional. And then it teaches us a second case, which is a case of a Nadar that was made by mistake. Again, that's the later Mishnah when he says he's not going to marry so and so. El Rabbi Yochan. But according to Rabbi Yochanan, who explains our Mishnah, where already, let's say, he was talking about the father of the girl that he didn't want to marry, already died, or let's say he already did Teshuvah. Again, Rabbi Yochanan interprets our Mishnah as a mistake. These things already happened, and he was not aware of them. So, what's the point of teaching two times the same halacha about neder betos, that it's not a real neder? And to that, the Gemara says, Kasha, indeed, that is difficult, according to Rabbi Yochanan. And the Gemara continues with the mission of Yod Amar Rabbi Meir. Further, Rabbi Meir says, Poschen lo menakosov shebetori. You're allowed to create a Pesach for a neder in order to undo the neder based on something that is written in the Torah as follows. V'yomer lo, we can say them as follows. Ilu ha'yisu yodei ashata over alosikom. V'yalositer. Had you known that you were transgressing on taking revenge or on holding a grudge, v'yalosis nesachicha bilvavecha, or on not hating your brother in your heart, v'yahaftalarecha kamocha, or that you're supposed to love your friend like yourself, v'chayachicha imcha, or that you're supposed to bring life to your brother, meaning shu'an, so, for example, if you took a nether not to, that he can't derive benefit from you, but he happens to be poor, now you're not able to support him, so you're violating that. If we say all of these things to him, Amr, and if he responds and he says, Ilu odeya, shuchein, Had I known that was the case, Lo no, that I never would have made a nether. So according to Rabbi Meir, Hareza Mutter, that is going to be Mutter, that is a way of undoing the nether. And the Gemara says, Amar le Rav Huna bar Rav Katina le Rabbonan. Rav Huna bar Rav Katina said to the Rabbonan, Name a kol de ma'ani lav alay nafil. The person should say, Not every poor person falls upon me to support. Meaning that last claim in the Mishnah was, Had you known that you're violating the chaya chicha imcha because he's poor and you need to support him, and now that there's a nether that he can't benefit from you, you're not able to support him, what kind of claim is that? He doesn't have to support every poor person. Ma'idimati li lafarnaso bahadi kuli alma mefarnasole. That which I support him with every Everybody else, meaning you're going to go to the Gabbai Tzedakah, the general community person who supports the poor person. I give to the Gabbai Tzedakah. I have no responsibility to directly to support this individual anyhow. And the Gemara continues, Amri Lay, they said back to him, Ani Yomer, I say, Kol Hanofel eno nofeli de Gabbai Tachila. Anybody who falls into poverty, it doesn't fall to the Gabbai first. Those who are close to that individual, the Krovim to that individual, it is their direct responsibility to support this poor person. And that's why the claim in the mission is accurate. You did have a responsibility as someone close to this individual to support him when he became poor.
And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, Poschin la'adam b'chsuba sishto. You're allowed to create a Pesach for a person who made a neder using the ksuba of his wife. Meaning to say, let's say a person makes a neder that his wife cannot derive benefit from him. Now he has to divorce his wife. So you're allowed to say, if you realize that you have to pay this large amount of money for a ksuba, would you have made the neder? And that would be a valid Pesach. If he says, I would not have made the neder, I didn't realize I needed to pay that much money, then we can undo the neder. And the Mishnah continues, There was an incident where a person made a nadir that his wife could not derive benefit from him. And the ksuba, it was 400 dinarim. He came before Rabbi Akiva, and Rabbi Akiva obligated him to give her the ksuba. Amar lo, so he said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, ches meos dinarin hiniach abba. My father left over 800 dinarim. Natal ochi dalid meos. My brother took 400. Vani dalid meos, and I took 400. All I have is 400, and now I owe all 400 to her. Lo daya shetitol hi masayim. Vani masayim, isn't it enough that she takes 200 and I take 200? Amar lo, Rabbi Akiva. So Rabbi Akiva said to him, Afilu ato mocher sa roshcha, even if you have to sell the hairs on your head, ato nosin lak subasi. Have to give her her ksuba. Amar Lo, he said to him, Ilu hayisi yodea shukain. Had I known that was the case, Lo hayisi noder, I never would have made this neder. Vitira Rabbi Akiva, and Rabbi Akiva permitted her, he undid the neder on this basis. And the Gemara says, Metaltali mi mishtabdi lechsuba, are movable objects, are they meshubad for the ksuba? Because the phrasing in the Mishnah was, even if you have to sell the hair on your head for the ksuba, you pay her the ksuba. But the hair on the head is not mishtabid for the ksuba, only land. There's only lean on land for a ksuba. So Amar Abai Abai says, Karka shava chesmeos dinar. No, what we mean is, there was land left over, it was 800 dinar. Really, we're talking about land in the Mishnah. But the Gemara says, Vakatani, Sarosho. But it says, The hairs of his head. Visarosho, Metaltalihu. And again, the hairs of his head, that is Metaltal, that's movable objects. And the Gemara says, No, Hachi Kamar, this is what the Mishnah means to say. Afilo atamocher saroshcha v'ochel, even if you need to sell the hair on your head in order for you to eat. In other words, you have to give her the land. There's a lien on the land for the ksuba. Now you're, you're going to have nothing. So how are you going to sustain yourself? Even if you have to sell the hair on your head to sustain yourself, that's what you have to do. But the Gemara says, Shamat mina, should we see from here that ain misajin l'bal chov, that we don't make any arrangements for the bal chov for the creditor. Meaning over here, we're forcing him to pay everything, even if that leaves him with nothing. But really, that's not necessarily true. As the Mefarish over here says, we've, we've established an Erchen and Bab Metziah, that we do leave him enough to sustain him. We leave him some vessels, we leave him a bed, we leave him a table, we leave him food for 30 days. So we do make arrangements for a creditor. We don't force a person to pay everything if that's going to leave him with nothing. And the Gemara says, Amr of Nachman Brevi Yitzchak, Rav Nachman Brevi Yitzchak says, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video, and Daf Samich Vav Amr Aleph.